Okay, let's go ahead and style this form. So um, open your style.css. Obviously, make sure you're working inside of French Alps, not French Alps Fluid. So open your style.css. And let's create um, a contact section. So far, we have the index section. We have the about section. And let's create the contact section because we're working on the contact page and then we'll start here so form we can just use the form element because we haven't given it an ID and we don't need to because we're only using the form once in the entire website so we might as well just use the form element padding 20 pixels because as you can see everything is stuck to the top and left corners and we don't want that it's not nice some padding would be nice um, background color a light a very light gray CCC and then let's give it a fixed width of 550 pixels okay save this and refresh okay so this is our form um, it is light gray it has nice padding within so that the words and the fields uh, are not touching the left and the top sides and it is 550 pixels wide now these titles if you remember we gave each of the labels and the spans um, the same class and the class value is titles we're going to use that value in order to style these the same way okay so let's go ahead and just say dot titles um, we haven't done something similar before usually what we do is put the element name then the dot or the pound sign and then the value um, of uh, you know the class or the ID in this case this is a class oops in this case it's a class if it were a pound sign it would be an ID but the reason why here we're only going to say dot titles is because if you look at your uh, contact page class titles is given to all the input elements um, I mean the label elements so label element has a class titles here um, the label element has class titles and so on here for the next control, the span element has class titles, right? So instead of giving the span element and the la label element, um, you know, the properties for class titles, we just say dot titles. And what happens is all of the elements in the work that happen to have class titles will follow those particular properties. So in this case, we don't need to be too specific and mention the element name before the dot sign. So open and close curly braces. Font, let's write in shorthand. Bold, 14 pixels. Arial, Helvetica, sans serif. Color, let's make it black. Oops. And save this and refresh the page. Okay, so now we solved also that span problem, and all our titles are black, bold, and um, uh, Arial. Black, bold, and Arial. Now let's divide these um, controls each within a rectangle okay that's why they're placed in a P we could have also placed them in divs but if we just give a background color to the P we have nice um, divisions within the form so P dot gray open close curly braces background color pound seven six seven six seven six which is a nice gray and padding 15 pixels and now I will save the page and see how this looks 
refresh okay so it's nice um, we have a gray background color behind each of the piece we have nice padding so that the phrase enter your name and the text field don't touch the left and top bottom sides of the P um, everything it looks nice and organized I would say that um, there's also one thing we can enhance you see this space between each of the uh, rectangles is a bit exaggerated it's a bit too much and it's taking place because of the default uh, margin of the P element so remember um, some of the block elements have a default margin such as the body element the, the UL element um, and so forth the P is one of those elements it has a top and bottom default margin so if we just set the margin of uh, the P element to zero you will notice now when we refresh the page that this extra top and bottom space will go away okay so this is much nicer we remove that margin and it's much prettier okay so wonderful let's also work with this um, button let's make it nicer um, I'm going to go ahead and just say input pound my btn i could have also just said pound my btn input is basically the element the input element whose id is my btn background color i'm sorry background image because what we want to do here is um, we've provided an image called submit.png which is um, a one pixel thick orange color image it's only it's a very very tiny image it's just one pixel wide okay and it's an orange color so what we'll do in CSS is just have that a very thin uh, Photoshop image duplicate as many times as the phrase submit form is and so it will look like an orange background um, so that's a common thing designers web designers do okay URL we're going to call the image open close parentheses semicolon and between those um, single quotes I'm going to refer to the image so it's within it's inside the images folder and it's called submit.png okay and then um, let's save this first before proceeding there it is so you see that this orange color is not um, it's not just color that uh, we didn't say background color it's not a background color it is basically a very thin Photoshop file that's a very thin and small one pixel wide Photoshop file that's being just duplicated uh, as uh, wide as this button to the width of this button okay now we have this default uh, you know border that is around the button we can get rid of it we can give it a, a color so let's let's work with that um, border two pixel solid AC2 101 semicolon let's refresh okay so we have a nice border now which is two pixels wide and it is a darker version of that orange so it's like um, a, a red um, and it's solid and also let's change the the phrase here submit form is currently in black black on orange is not very visible let's just change the color of the text to white save okay so this is a very nice form nice clean organized uh, light gray background color for the form and each control is in its own uh, darker gray rectangle and we have a nice submit form at the bottom